Hello, and welcome to Spode Speed Dota. My name is Spode. Today we'll be talking for the last time about Faceless Void and his initiations. Um, in the past, we've talked about farming styles. We've talked about being patient with our chronospheres so that we don't screw over our allies. And finally, um, in our first video, we talked about Faceless Void requiring team follow-up for his initiation. Today, I'll be showing a game that I played earlier um, showcasing what I've learned this week through watching these replays. Um, without further ado, let's get into the game. So, this is the game. 33 and a half minutes in. We just scored almost a team wipe against the enemy team, and we've done reasonably well um, in the very recent past. However, you'll notice there's a very sizable gold lead for the Dyer that's only just starting to dip away now. So, Faces Void. Chronosphere's off cooldown. What should you be doing? Farming. So, that's exactly what I'm thinking I'm doing. But, how do I farm? How do I ensure that I am safe to farm in my jungle? Well, I have one ward here, and I've got another ward in mid lane. But, I don't really know whether this area of my jungle is safe to farm. So, what I do is I buy a ward. Um, a lot of you would probably say, Faceless Void, he's a carry, he shouldn't be buying wards. But sometimes you'll have games where your Crystal Maiden decides to go carry, or your Marana also decides to go carry, and suddenly, your Faceless Void, you need a ward, instead of telling your supports to get it and they not get it, you just go ahead and do it yourself. Because it's 65 gold, it's one item slot, it's not that big a deal. It's really something that you should be able to do and just get over with in your pub. Anyways. Securing my farm. You'll notice in a second, this ward is about to save my life. Because even though Chronosphere is off cooldown, I'm safe to farm. Why? That ward's there. It just saved my life from the Slardar. And now, Slardar is overextended, Pudge is overextended, and we're able to secure a good kill against the Pudge and almost kill the Slardar. If we hadn't gotten a little bit unlucky, we might have actually done it. Now, my Chronosphere is almost off cooldown. So what am I going to be doing? Well, I'm going to be looking for a fight. And how do I do that? Well, patience. I'm not really able to secure a decent team fight unless the enemy comes to me, or my team goes to them. In this case, the enemy came to me, and Marana managed to get a really good arrow. So, my team decides to follow it up with a good haunt. I managed to get a decent chronosphere that allows Spectre, Marana, Crystal Maiden, and Tinker all to hit this Templar Assassin and the Slardar. None of the rest of their team is anywhere nearby to help, so we wipe out the Slardar and we wipe out the Bloodseeker. Well, now what do we do? Chronosphere's on cooldown? Time to farm. But, in this case, farming doesn't mean going and farming the jungle. Farming means securing more gold for your team as a whole by killing this tier 1 tower. It also ends up giving us a little bit more space, and denies some vision to the enemy. And there it's dead. Now we'll be skipping ahead a little bit, um, to about 39 minutes into the game. Almost 30, almost, almost 40 minutes into the game. So, now we're back. Face is void. My chronosphere is off cooldown. The enemy looks to be gearing up to push our bottom lane. You'll notice on the minimap, the Dyer has some really good warding and some really good vision inside of our, our base, which should give them an advantage um, in pushing our high ground. However, that vision advantage can be relatively well nullified by simply playing Faceless Void well enough. In this case, I notice, hey, Templar Assassin and Wraith King just blinked up. Their blinks are on cooldown. Crystal Maiden is close, she has Blink. Tinker is close, he has Blink and Dagon. Marana has Ognum Scepter, she can follow some damage, and Spectre almost has Haunt. Just one more second. So, I notice, I think I can probably take a decent fight here. So I Blink in, Chronosphere the Wraith King, and the Templar Assassin. CM gets a really nice ulti off, we take down the Aegis and the Wraith King Incarnation. And then Tinker comes in at the clutch moment, takes down the TA, nullifying that Aegis and nullifying TA's second life. Um, meanwhile, 
Spectre kills Pudge in the back. That's two down already. And we have not yet lost a soul. So, the rest of the team fight ends up going reasonably well. Our Spectre does end up dying, but Tinker deals a lot of damage, and we manage to score a really nice team win. So, what do we do now? Well, Chronosphere's off cooldown, or Chronosphere's on cooldown. Therefore, the answer is farm. Um, and you'll notice we're starting to climb up in the farm because we've been able to stay alive in these team fights, and we've been able to secure farm after them. In this case, securing farm means pushing a tier two tower, and we do that very successfully. Um, tier two tower dies almost immediately. Now. Chronosphere is almost off cooldown, and we're looking for another fight. The enemy um, could potentially defend this, so we assess the situation. There's three of us up here. Spectre doesn't have haunt for another 14 seconds. Tinker can BOTs in relatively quickly. We decide it's probably safe enough to at least push this tower, even if we probably can't um, stick around for super long if they all show up as five. And that's exactly what happens. We see at least three coming in, all three of which have blink daggers. So we decide it's the safer play to simply back off and not take any losses. Patience. In this case, patience saved our team. Because if we had stuck around, maybe I would have gotten a decent chronosphere. However, um, that wasn't secured. We didn't know whether... Um, Tinker would be able to make it in. Spectre didn't quite have Haunt up, um, so it all it definitely could have been a really bad team fight. And then the enemy could could have pushed our racks and simply won the game. Instead, this game ended up going on for another 30 minutes, and ended up right along here. So in the very last fight we're going to watch, I get. An alright Chronosphere on two heroes, my Tinker end up, ends up dying because I accidentally caught him in it, but we managed to clean up the enemy team, um, and then push really nicely for the win. Do, 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 do. I've almost got another Chronosphere up, they'll have one more chance to defend. TA and Bloodseeker don't have buyback, so we feel fairly safe in pushing. We get one set of racks, we kill off the Wraith King, he doesn't have buyback. Killed Slardar, he has to buy back. Slardar is the only one who's up, because unfortunately Pudge DC'd about 5 minutes before this happened. It's a long game. And we managed to do reasonably well, kill the tier 4s, and focus the Ancient, and then we win the game. Radiant victory! Woo! Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed Faceless Void. Uh, next time, we'll probably be talking about a different hero. Let me know what you'd like to see um, in the comments, and email me if you are interested in uh, suggesting anything else.